Islam. Rise, 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 rise of Islam. Rise. We are stronger together, united as one. Oh my. False Prophets of Arabia Before, we talked about how some of the Muslims didn't want to follow the five pillars of Islam, like giving zakat. Later, after the 11 groups went to each of the tribes, they understood their mistake. But at the same time, there were also actual evil people who wanted to destroy Islam. In order to understand why the evil people were doing this evil act, we need to focus on what happened after Prophet Muhammad wasallam's death to understand the whole picture of the Arab land. When Muhammad wasallam became a prophet at the age of 40, almost all the people and tribes did not accept or support him at first. After 23 years of hard work and patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him successful in three major cities of Arabia, Makkah, Medina, and Taif. Seeing that, the bad people thought that if someone claimed themselves as a prophet, it would be easier for them to control the people and the land. They thought that would be the easiest way to get powerful and become a leader or a king. So, right after Prophet Muhammad ﷺ's success, many tribe leaders started to claim themselves as a new prophet. When doing this, they started to lie and started to twist the real Islam, which made the new Muslims confused. So, the 11 groups that Caliph Abu Bakr Radantala created had two big jobs. Number one, to establish peace agreements again between all of Arabia. And number two, spread the true Islam and to stop the false prophets who were confusing and breaking the Muslims' unity. Soon, the new commander-in-chief, Khalid bin Walid, and all of the other generals of the 11 groups started their journey. One of the false prophets was an evil liar named Tulayha. He knew that the Muslims would not like his big lie. To protect himself, he united some of the bad tribes to fight against the Muslims. So, in that situation, Caliph Abu Bakr Radantala sent Khalid bin Walid to stop the bad Tulayha. But Tulayha was scared to fight with the strong Muslim army. So, the bad Tulayha told his army to fight against the Muslims. But he would not join the fight. Instead, he would pretend and wait to get some revelation from his god. After starting the fight, one of his army generals later realized that Tulayha was a liar and a false prophet. He told his soldiers not to fight for that false prophet and accept Islam. Within a short time, many of them became Muslims, and the bad Tulayha ran away to Syria with his wife. A few years later, he became Muslim when Umar Adantala was the caliph. All the other bad soldiers ran away from the battlefield and got together in another place. Over there, they organized more bad people for their evil army. But this time, they chose an evil lady, Salma, as their commander-in-chief. After hearing that news, Khalid Radantala stopped that evil army and destroyed them. In Central Arabia, one of the strongest enemy was the evil Musaylama. He had a strong army of more than 40,000 soldiers. He was very smart and a good speaker. So, his people respected him very much. He had his beautiful palace in Yamama, which was in present-day Riyadh, around 500 miles from Mecca and Medina. 
Because he was greedy for power, he started to lie and call himself a prophet. He started twisting the real Islam, and that confused a lot of new Muslims since Islam was not strong in their hearts yet. Around the same time, a bad woman named Saja also claimed to be a prophet as well. They were both starting to become powerful. But when they heard that Caliph Abu Bakr Adantala was sending different groups to stop all the fake prophets, they got scared. They knew that the Muslims were strong and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was on the true Muslim side. So, for their protection, the evil Musailama and Saja married each other to become even stronger. And together, they made a plan to attack Medina, which was the main center of Islam at that time. When Saja came back to her followers after her wedding, she told them that as a marriage gift, they didn't have to pray their morning and nighttime prayers anymore. This was an example of how they were changing the true Islam. But in the meantime, after the Muslims won the war against the big Roman army, both Musailama and Saja were scared to attack Medina. When Khalid bin Walid and his army came to attack the evil Saja's army, they all got scared and ran away and left their false prophet leader all by herself. Finally, she also decided to run away and no longer was a threat to Islam. Now, for Musailama, Caliph Abu Bakr Radantala sent the Muslim army general Ikrama Radantala, who was Abu Jahal's son. But the evil Musailama had a very strong army. So the Muslims could not win that battle. Then Caliph Abu Bakr Radantala sent Khalid bin Walid with a strong army of 13,000 soldiers. It was a very big fight for the Muslim army because the bad liar had 40,000 soldiers. At first for the Muslims, it was really hard. But they kept their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did not give up. With their strong faith, the Muslims started to destroy the enemy. Then many of the enemies started to run away. Around 6,000 enemies got scared and hid at Musailama's garden and closed the gates. But the Muslims were brave and broke into the garden, and soon the garden became a battlefield as well. When the Muslim army was almost close to winning the war, the false prophet Musailama tried to escape. But at that moment, the Muslim soldier Washi took his spear and destroyed Musailama. Before Washi became a Muslim, he was the slave who destroyed the great Hamza Radantala in the Battle of Uhud. After destroying Musailama, seeing that, many of his men got scared and many realized that he was not a prophet at all. This battle was very important for the Muslims in order to bring peace in Central Arabia. Because Musailama was one of the main leaders of that area. His people were always breaking the law and they were twisting the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His people also used to steal when others were in the middle of trading with one another. For those bad people, the Muslims and the general people could not travel and do their business safely. And that's why it was so important to stop them. This was known as the Battle of Yamama. In this battle, even though the Muslims won, the Muslim army lost around 1,000 great Sahabas. But unfortunately, 400 to 700 of these great heroes were the Hafiz, who memorized the entire Quran with all of their heart. After losing many Hafiz in the Battle of Yamama, Caliph Abu Bakr Adantala and Umar Radantala realized the importance of an official Qur'an in a form of a book. Inshallah, in the next episode, we will see how they did that. 
Please join our end of the year fundraiser to reach our goal in this difficult year. We are struggling to pay our basic monthly costs and we need your help. Please become a monthly supporter by giving any amount for our great Dawa mission. We want to thank all of you for helping out with your love and support. Alhamdulillah, because of all the support, we reached more than 100 million viewers all over the world as millions continue to grow with our other five channels in four different languages. Thank you so much and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of our supporters and every team member in this great organization. Ameen.